Hello again. So let's continue with the analysis of our um, Windows 2008 file server response times. Just a recap, we've captured an example of the slow opening of a PDF uh, from a PC that's connected to a Windows 2008 file server over the internet using a VPN. And we captured a trace file We've added some columns into the trace file summary and then we've exported the data. And we've exported it and opened it in Excel. And we did that in a certain way, so please look at the video, the earlier videos to see how we did that. Now I need to fill in these gaps. So we have gaps as you can see just here, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with them in this way. We start off by sorting the data. We have to do a two-stage sort. We have to sort by direction and then we have to sort by number, frame number, but reversed. So highest to lowest. Let's take that. That gives us this type of trace and you can see here that we've got these issues where we have uh, blocks of packets being sent but we don't actually have any um, intervening uh, information. So let's now fill in the gaps So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, I've inserted uh, four new columns and now I'm going to copy these headers. In fact, let's wrap these headers so that we can read them because they're not very clear. Okay, Ooh, let's, let's change that slightly. Let's It's a bit better. Right, so we've we now put in a, a formula that we used in the previous video. So we start off by saying if this value over here is blank then I want the previous value in the current column and if not then I'll actually take the value that's in this column over here on the same row. So I get that number there. Now this looks a bit strange as I said in the previous video because it references back to what appears to be the title, the header row, but that's just because I'm working on the first row here. All I do is I copy that down and that gives me all of the same values as I have in here. And where I have gaps, so let's go and find some gaps such as here you can see that I've copied what's in there and as we get these TCP segments sent then I'm copying these down so that I'm filling in the gaps so that's uh, that, that's because sorry I, re I should explain I reversed the uh, trace entries because the read because Wireshark shows the actual read response um, wording and all of the values here it shows it in the last packet of a TCP segment sequence so because I've reversed it now it's the it's the first one in the sequence um, so that's given me that value there and then all I need to do is copy that across into the other columns. So I'm copying that same formula into each of these columns. 
and uh, now I can take all of that, double click on the blob in the corner, and I've copied everything down the down the sheet. So then I have to use the trick that I've used before. Um, the problem I have here is that if I resort this data, um, I'm going to mess all these values up because they rely on the formulas and the relative positions of everything. So I insert four columns. And then what I do is I take these four calculated columns and I do control C to copy them. I move across here and now I do a paste special to so to access the paste special dialog box I press alt E and S and then I choose values paste those in and now what we have is instead of having these formulas we now have actually have the values that are derived from those formulas and that includes all the ones that are filled in the gaps where we have gaps so now that means that I no longer need these columns including the original ones which have the gaps I can get rid of all of those and I now have all the values filled in the way I want them now one of the things here is um, that oh, now we're, we're safe to sort these back into uh, normal numeric order so let's just uh, Delete that level and change that to smallest to largest, and now we have everything sorted back into the uh, the order in which they the packets appeared on the wire. Now there's one thing here. I said that if I resort the data and I've got formulas in these columns, then all those values will get messed up. So if that's true, how comes I didn't mess up all the values in client IP and client TCP? Well, the reason is because these formulas only refer to cells in the same row. You can see it's row two. These ones again, only row two, only row two. So I'm quite, it's quite possible with, you can sort these without any problems because they're not referring to other rows. It's just when you've got a formula that's referring to another row, which these ones were. So that gives me the data in the way I want. Now I w the next thing I wanted to explain was we have this issue of these multiple packets in one particular cell. So how am I going to handle that? Well the the short answer to that is basically I'm not. In most cases, and I've checked this in, in a very high percentage of cases, when you have two requests in one packet you will get two responses in a packet, although these ones happen to be split across uh, two TCP packets. But if we look in other cases, let's look further down the sheet. More often than not, you're going to see it paired like this. So we've got three SMB commands, sorry, three SMB messages in a packet, and they're all requests. And then coming back from the server, from 445 back to the PC, we've got the corresponding responses. And again, there's all three in one packet. That's not always the case. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, assume that it is the case, but then we're going to detect where we've got differences and uh, deal with those as we need, need to. So let's sort the data into the order we need it for the initial piece of piece of work. So what we have to do is um, because I'm going to assume that this is multiple clients and multiple TCP port numbers and all those things, I'm going to do a full search sort across all of the columns. This is a bit of overkill for this particular exercise, but uh, I want to show you how to do it if you're uh, if you're looking at something a bit more complicated so we just come across and sort by all of these values tree ID process ID 
and then my Excel command sequence number. Uh, we get this prompt because uh, it's telling you that it's seen numbers. For example, in column M here, it's seeing num numbers and then it's seeing what it considers to be a string. Uh, basically, just take the default on this. Um, it prompts you because it's got it for a couple of columns. There we have a standalone op lock break. I'm going to ignore that for the moment. We'll just gloss over that one. And uh, then you can see we've got uh, request response pairs. Now we're pretty good all the way through until we get towards the bottom of the sheet. Uh, so we have these sorts of issues here where we don't seem to have a, we've got uh, responses but we don't have corresponding requests. So I'm going to do another fiddle here but I'm running out of time so I'm going to have to show you that in the next video.